Greetings, the Astro 30 here and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Got some PCBs in my hand to assemble today. Let's have a look. I always like opening a new box of PCBs. There's always something nice about it. It's like Christmas. Here we go. Ah, oh, ta-da! They turned out awesome. Nice. So let me get one out of the bag and we'll have a good look. So these measure 100 by 100, so this fits in the $5 PCB range. Looks very nice. Now if this works, which it should, there'll be a link in the description down below where you can purchase this PC, PCB. There's the bottom, because we like bottoms on this channel. Nice. Nice thick copper traces for the high current side. Now, I don't have the aluminium bracket that I need to mount the transistors to, and I don't have the output transistors. However, this amplifier will still work without the output stage connected. It will pass a signal, um, preferably unloaded, uh, because the emitters of the drivers on either side here go through these two degeneration resistors here back to the output point so it will still work as an amplifier so we can still pump a signal in see if one comes out see if the bias adjusts and see if the offset null adjusts one thing to note though up here we've got a BD139 transistor and its metal tab is facing towards the front of the board in fact all of the TO126 transistors have the emitter facing towards the right hand side of the board and the metal f heat sink face facing towards the front of the board. But we'll notice there's a BC546 transistor behind this BD139. This is the VBI, VBE multiplier or bias spreader and that needs to be in contact with the back of the driver so it can monitor the driver and well track the drivers. Um, and the easiest way to do that is make sure it's up in close contact with it and then run a zap, zap strap or zip tie around the two just to make it uh, a solid permanent um, bond. That will make sense once I've assembled it and I'll show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this up in time lapse, um, put everything on here but the output stage as previously mentioned and then I'll run some low level voltage tests on it. See if the bias adjusts, offset null adjusts, and that we can pass an input signal back to the output. So let's get busy. About an hour later I've got the board assembled for the most part apart from the output stage as I said because I'm waiting on a bracket, a little uh, aluminium L bracket. Uh, I've also ordered the TIP35 and 36C respectively from DigiKey because I want the same case style because JCAR for some reason seemed to have one case style for the 36C and a completely different case style for the 35C. Plus it says Morocco on the 35C and I'm yeah, mm. a bit dubious, but 
I also ended up with this bonus 100 ohm resistor, which I have no idea why it's even there. I think originally the long tail pair, before I put in the adjustment pot to adjust the offset, that was the resistor going to the constant current source, and it just ended up in the bag. And some parts went missing too, I don't know where they went. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is, oh, this is what I meant about these two transistors here of a cable tie around the T092 and the T126 and I clamped it before soldering so it made it you know uh, not stress the solder joints and pulls the components into where they want to go then soldered it then buggerized around with this because it fell down below the transistor and I couldn't get it back up so I had to cut it off and put a new one on but yeah I got solder on a resistor not anymore so what i'm going to do is i'm going to install a couple of 100 ohm 5 watt safety resistors in place of the fuses for now crank my power supply my linear one up to plus minus uh, 19 volts as far as it will go but first i'm going to make sure to rotate the bias pot no matter what the supply voltage is, fully counterclockwise, which I believe is about there because I think I've turned it more than about 15 turns now. So that sets the bias to minimum, so we don't um, like have shitloads of current going through the drivers because the output stage is not connected. So we don't want these overheating. So, all right, let me get set up with some uh, test equipment. I'm going to measure what the DC offset on the output is and then worry about adjusting the current um, after that. So, let me get set up and, um, yeah, we'll do some tests. All right, got that set up. Hmm, it's drawing about 70 MA. Interesting. That could be because the output stage is not connected, so I've got to be real careful that these driver transistors don't overheat. So that's currently what our DC offset is. I'll just see if that's adjustable. Maybe the other way. It is coming down a bit. That's the end of the travel. Let me do this off camera uh, so I'm not rooting around around a camera here. Well, I have a couple of transistors connected up as a temporary output stage. And I do have an adjustable offset. As we can see, that's reasonably respectable. But the bias is through the roof and is not adjustable. I mean, it will adjust higher than that, but it won't come down. And I don't know why. Because across that 100 ohm resistor, we have 15 volts, which equates to 150 milliamps of current going through the output stage, and that's as low as, as it goes. Hmm. Now, looking at my hand-drawn schematic for this, it, um, it did work on breadboard, but it's not working on a PCB. Um... The only thing I can think of is maybe these two diodes are causing an issue with this biasing network. I mean, it shouldn't. It worked on the breadboard, but... Hmm. I'm going to have to do some further investigation here because this is kind of annoying. Well, I've been pissing about with this for the last two hours and not getting anywhere. I've taken the bias servo apart, modified resistors, everything. I cannot bring the current under... 130 MA and the funny thing is the thing is working like an amplifier it does pass a signal I've even changed the output pair no difference um, I'm about to give up on this because I can't make it work I've even removed the uh, two diodes underneath these two resistors that is part of the biasing network didn't make a difference put them back in doesn't make a difference this resistor is getting hot because of the current being drawn but yeah this is ridiculous it worked on the breadboard it does not work on the PCB and I don't know why so 
I'm about ready to just like throw the thing in the bin and say, look, forget it. I can't be bothered dealing with this anymore. Um, but anyway, I'm going to connect up the uh, oscillator to the circuit and it's unloaded. Okay, I'll turn the power on. So that's with the bias pot all the way to uh, minimum. That's 135 MA. And if I start the oscillator, it's producing a signal. So, I don't know. If I increase the bias, and the bias pot came out of circuit. The lead popped off the end of that resistor. I even tried putting a series resistor in there. It makes no difference. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, I really don't. And that's kind of annoying because there's quite a fair few expensive components on there. Well, not expensive, but when you add the price of all the components up, it turns out to be quite expensive. So, yeah, this was a waste of time. I just cannot make the bias servo work. So, unless anyone's got any other ideas, let me know. I'll show the schematic in just a minute so we can see what's going on. But, yeah, this, this is not working. Plus, I've noticed that the VAS transistor is getting quite warm to the touch, and it shouldn't be. But the thing is, it's not oscillating, which is pretty evident on the scope screen, apart from random noise that the scope leads are picking up. It's not oscillating, so you tell me. So here's a look at the schematic. Not much has changed from the original um, breadboard version. Everything here is the same. Um, DC offset adjust up here, that works. It's this circuit around here that doesn't appear to be working correctly. That's the transistor that's sitting up next to this BD139 driver. I've got the right values of components there. I haven't like stuck a PMP in there by accident. Um, but yeah. I can't understand why this worked on breadboard but doesn't work on the PCB. It's, it's just strange. Yeah, unfortunately I can't get this one to work properly. I mean it is outputting a signal so that's the main thing but it cannot run at 135 or without the series resistor I've got in there 150 MA, 160 MA, that's just too high. And by the way the higher the power supply rails the higher the current is. I had it at plus minus 30 and I was drawing 280 milliamps when this pot was rotated fully counterclockwise. So I don't know what to do here. I did double check the routing um, in the CAD file and it is routed correctly so I just have absolutely no idea what's going on here. You would think that it, if it worked on the breadboard that it would work on PCB but obviously that's not the case so this this is going to have to be scrapped because I I, I, I can't make the biasing servo work uh, leave your thoughts below and I'll certainly try and revisit this um, in the future but at the moment I'm going to go probably work on something else because this one's doing my head in. I'm the Astro 30 and if you enjoyed this video please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always this is the Astro 30 saying see ya, thanks for watching, have a great day.